Today I'm going to be showing you how to change the turbo in a 5th gen Cummins. We've got the classic P003A and P2262. Which pretty much means that the turbo is pooched. We're going to be replacing it with a BD Screamer turbo. It's a factory drop-in replacement that I think it's capable for like 650 horsepower, something like that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to drain the engine oil because whenever you change a turbo, you must change the engine oil as well. And then we're going to drain the coolant. We've got the oil draining, that's easy enough. Then the coolant drain is on the driver's side and it's just down there. If you can see that yellow, I think it's called a petcock valve. Uh, that's what we're gonna loosen off to drain the coolant. If you're planning on reusing your coolant, make sure your container to catch it in is super clean, but this is also a really good time to just put new coolant in your truck. Once you get it loose and it starts draining, go over here and remove this cap. Go slowly if your truck is hot. That allows air to get in and you'll see, look, it's draining much faster now. Now you're gonna disconnect both negative terminals on your batteries. Now this particular truck has had the EGR removed. So if your truck still has the EGR, you're gonna see all this stuff here. And it's probably gonna be in your best interest to remove it for a little more space. You could also just try leaving it on. So now I'm gonna remove this air intake pipe. And I'm also gonna remove this hose that goes from the turbo to your CCV filter. By the way, I'm not following a procedure or anything. I'm just doing it how I do it. So if you have a better way to do it, feel free to let me know in the comments. Okay, now I'm gonna unplug this exhaust back pressure sensor. If you still have the EGR, you can unplug this and we're just gonna fold this electrical out of the way. Now I'm gonna disconnect this little coolant line and just tuck it out of the way over there. And I'm gonna remove this coolant line. Now again, if you have the EGR, yours is gonna look different. That's just how I'm doing it. So to get this hose off, I actually unscrewed this sensor and popped it out. And then as you can see here, this has actually been modified with like tin snips or something to allow more room to bring this hose up. Normally this is all plastic. If you don't wanna just snip yours like that, then you're gonna to have to take the eight bolts out of here, remove the oil fill cap, and you can pull this CCV filter cover right off and that will get this out of the way. Okay, now I'm gonna unbolt this, uh, this bracket here that kinda of holds everything in place when you do the EGR delete. Now I'm gonna remove this coolant line and just tuck it over to the side. And then right here you have your turbo coolant line. I'm gonna remove that from both sides and take it out of the truck. And then this other line that kind of goes down there, that's your oil feed line. We're gonna remove that off as well. You can just cut that zip tie there and then yeah, just get those three lines out of the way. And by the way, if this video helps you out and you wanna show me a little bit extra support, you can go to darkirondiesel.com. I do sell merch there. I got shirts like this, hats, hoodies, you know, the usual stuff. It's good quality. I wear it all the time myself. And there's also links on my website to delete kits if you're ever interested in deleting your truck yourself. So I've never actually removed a turbo on a fifth gen yet. I've done tons on fourth gens, but just looking at this, I think it would be in our best interest to actually remove this passenger side battery and then remove the battery tray. So, and I'm also gonna remove this uh, air filter housing just because this is an easy, quick thing to get out. We'll have to take this cross member bar off as well, but yeah, that's what I'm gonna go after right now. Okay, on second thought, I left this air intake in for the time being, just because you have to actually pull off all of this stuff to get it out. So maybe we'll take it out later. I'm gonna leave it in for now. I got this battery out. I disconnected all the power lines off of it. For this grid heater relay, I think I'm just gonna take those two, I think those eight millimeter bolts, take them and just kind of let that float down there. I popped out all of these little clips. And I think to get this air box out, there's just one, two, three, four bolts. So I'm gonna try it out. Okay, I got them out, but it's still tight. But I think the problem is these two bolts here. I'm gonna remove those two bolts and then I think it'll come out. Okay, even with those bolts removed, it's still tight in there. I guess this is why you guys watch these videos to watch me struggle so that when you do it, it's nice and smooth sailing, right? I'm just gonna pull this mud flap off and take this whole inner fender right out and then I can see up there and see what's going on. All right, that makes sense. There's a bolt there and a bolt up there. So I'm gonna remove those and then this thing better come out. This thing's pissing me off. It's loose in there now, but I think I wanna actually bring it down a bit and it hits this coolant line. Um, so this is the coolant line off your coolant reservoir. I'm gonna disconnect this. Hopefully it doesn't leak anything. It shouldn't because we drained the coolant. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna take this guy off just so that it can kind of fall down. I don't use these often, but when I do need them, they come in handy. Just put them on the hose clamp and as you squeeze them, that moves. And uh, it's super nice to get some hard to reach hose clamps off. And I still can't get it out. So we're gonna have to remove this air intake. Take all these little clips and we're gonna pull this piece right off the truck first. 
All right, now there's a bolt here and one on that side. We're gonna remove that. And then I think we're gonna have to try to kind of separate this a little bit. Never mind, you can kind of just pry this up and pop it off these rubber grommets. And then this whole thing, as you can see, just comes out in one piece. Now we should be able to grab this. Oh, are you serious? Is that what was holding me in there? You gotta be freaking kidding me if I do that. definitely still tight but uh, yeah there we go and I'm pulling it kind of towards the air intake so I think it's definitely a good idea to remove that air intake I'd probably do that first if I were to do this again now this coolant line we removed off this reservoir and kind of just tuck it over to the side and now it looks like we actually have a decent amount of room in there we might have to take off the coolant reservoir. I'm not sure yet. Looking from the wheel well, it's pretty tight right there. So I think we're gonna just remove this coolant reservoir and then we'll have all the room in the world. So it looks like you gotta undo this sensor. There's a bolt down there. Looking at the top, there's a bolt there. There's a bolt under here. Unbolt the AC line. I would just take this coolant line off of there. Pop out a couple of these alligator clips for electrical and we should be able to just pull that right out of the truck. Easy. All right, look at all the room for activities now. This is looking really good. If you have the EGR in your truck, I don't know if you'd actually have to remove it or not. I know it does overhang a little bit, so to get down in here to unbolt the turbo, it might be a pain in the ass, but you could try leaving it on and see how it goes. But right now, what I'm gonna do is see the bolts. There's one of the bolts back there. The four bolts that mount the turbo to the manifold, I'm gonna try to spray them with some penetrating fluid. Also, if we look at the downpipe, this V-band clamp, I'm gonna soak that down with some penetrating fluid too, just so that hopefully it comes apart a little nicer. Then I'm gonna loosen this V-band clamp. You're probably gonna have to use a pry bar to pop it off or a flathead screwdriver. And then this charge pipe here, I'm gonna loosen that and uh, pop this off the turbo right there. I got this disconnected and the down pipe back there is disconnected. I'm gonna cut the zip ties that hold the electrical to the turbo. There's also this little orange thing. I tried to pop it off and it just kind of broke. So I'm just gonna leave it for right now. And then we're gonna figure out how to remove the oil drain and the coolant drain on the bottom of the turbo. Okay, so I busted this off because it doesn't matter because we're putting a new turbo in it anyways. I unplugged this connector. And then now I'm gonna try to remove this sensor um, out of the, the kind of elbow of the exhaust. And then the third electrical cable goes to, I believe it's a, a speed sensor right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to uh, take that little eight mil bolt or whatever out and then try to wiggle that out. And then all of these electrical, all this electrical, we can just kind of hang down uh, and get it out of our way. If you want, you could try to unplug it here and then pull the turbo with the electrical. But that module down there, you have to unplug the yellow tab and then that whole module has to come out too. And that module is a pain in the ass to take out. So I'm gonna do it the way I said and I'll let you know if it worked. Okay, this is seized in there. There's no effing way it's coming out. So I'm leaving that. I did get the speed sensor out and the other electrical is disconnected. So this is the only wire that we're gonna have to kind of fight with. But I'm gonna wait until we have the turbo loose and kind of moved all over out of the way a bit and then it'll be much easier to remove that module that that uh, sensor is connected to so now i want to tackle you got your oil drain right here which has two 10 millimeter bolts and then right next to it is your coolant it's got just a, a banjo bolt fit in and that's your coolant drain the oil drain should be two 10 mil bolts and that uh, banjo coolant drain is 22 i believe 22 mil these are actually really easy to get out which is nice all right these are uh, both loose if your new turbo doesn't come with new washers for this banjo bolt make sure you're saving them now we're gonna remove the turbo from the exhaust manifold so hopefully this isn't too bad to access those bolts it looks like the top one here and the bottom one you could get a wrench in here which shouldn't be too bad and then on the other side you can actually see one of the bolts right there so that one will be easy and then the one above it i'm not sure that one might be the only difficult one but yeah go ahead and uh, remove them this tool is actually super handy it kind of wraps around the wrench and it just adds more leverage to it and they're super handy in uh, areas where they actually fit the two bottom bolts you can actually use an impact to get them off so that's super handy so the top right bolt was fairly easy to get off it was definitely tight this bottom right bolt i used an impact i still have the bottom left bolt on because i'm just that's an easy one to get so i'm waiting but i'm doing a sneaky thing i'm actually going to remove this uh 
this elbow off the back of the turbo because I think I might be able to put an impact on the top left bolt because it's really tight and I can't get it loose. Okay, I got off. Try not to damage this little kind of set ring. That's how you know where to orientate it on the new turbo. But as you can see, you can see both of the bolts right there. So I should be able to hit them with an impact now. And then the turbo will fall right off. And then this elbow we just took off that's still connected to that, uh, that module. Uh, I might just leave it and then just reinstall it back when the new turbo is in the truck. I haven't decided yet. For that top left one up there, there wasn't enough room for a socket and a swivel. So I actually used the 15 mil swivel socket and then I could just barely fit it on and use an impact. But all these bolts are out, so this turbo is loose. So I'm just gonna kind of pull it forward, drop it off of those studs. And, uh, and then I guess because I have that elbow off already, everything should be disconnected. So I'm gonna probably pull it right out the wheel well. Just be careful with these AC lines, but you can kind of rotate it like this. And now I should be able just to pull it right out of this wheel well. It just barely fit between this fender. So if you are having fitment issues, you could just use a jack, jack up the truck. This axle will hang down a bit and then it gives you some more room. But hey, we got her out. And uh, that's what it looks like in there. Do yourself a favor in case you ever have to remove the exhaust manifold. And now that you have all this room, take this stupid metal clip that connects the top bolt to the bottom bolt and just pry it off. Use like a little punch and a hammer. And I would just get rid of it if you want, because that is a pain in the ass to try to remove with the turbo in the truck. So we got the new turbo. It just says, do not remove actuator. This actuator is already calibrated to the turbo. So you don't have to do any calibrations or nothing. So you're gonna to wanna to transfer everything from this old turbo to the new turbo, like this, for example. You're also gonna have your oil feed fitting and your coolant feed fitting. Oh, hey, Vinny. Vinny, you're in my way. I noticed that this speed sensor O-ring actually stuck in the old turbo, so I'm gonna to have to pull it out uh, and put it on the speed sensor. Vinny, what are you, what's your deal, dude? What's your deal, dude? On the bottom side of the turbo, it doesn't look like there's anything that needs to be removed. Also, these heat shields should be swapped over to the new turbo. It comes with new O-rings. You can replace the O-rings on the fittings. And then before you put the oil feed line in, it's always a good idea to just put some fresh new engine oil in there just to kind of pre-lube the turbo. This one, I can see it's been leaking oil. So obviously they, it kind of came pre-lubed, but I'm still gonna add a little bit more. Okay, this should be all ready to go in the truck. The speed sensor is still out just because I never actually unplugged it. It's just hanging out in the truck. I got both of my heat shields on this one and the one down there. I actually had to use vice grips to get some of these bolts out because they were just kind of corroded and I couldn't get a socket on them. And then I just used pliers to tighten them, but they're all on. This elbow here at the back, I'm gonna leave that off for now again. This guy right here, just because again, I didn't unplug this because it's a pain in the ass. So I'll just put this on the turbo when the turbo is back uh, bolted up and tightened to the exhaust manifold. So now I'd grab some scotch Brite or something and just kind of clean this up a little bit. Just where the turbo gasket's going to go. You can wipe this uh, oil drain line. Uh, and we do have a new gasket for that. And we have new uh, ceiling washers for this uh, banjo bolt. Your kit should come with some new studs. If you're having a hard time getting the stud in, just kind of put two nuts together, tighten them together and then you can tighten the stud all the way in and then just back the nuts off. My kit also comes with new studs for this exhaust manifold, but I'm not gonna waste my time pulling these studs out when there's nothing wrong with them. So you can put your new gasket on the exhaust manifold, and then we're gonna put this turbo back in the truck and we're gonna tighten it to the exhaust manifold. And just before I put the turbo in, I like to just take a look at the bottom and make sure there's nothing blocking the oil and the coolant drain. You never know if some manufacturers might put a plug in there or something like that. Okay, the new turbo is in. If you can get a torque wrench on them, they're supposed to be torqued to 32 foot-pounds, the four bolts or nuts that hold the turbo on. You're supposed to do them in a cross pattern. Now we're gonna throw this elbow back on the turbo and remember it has this little dowel and that lines up to a little dowel hole on the back of the turbo and that just shows how to orientate it. And then we're gonna tighten this V-band clamp and so this is bolted securely to the turbo. And then you might as well just bolt it up to the downpipe as well. We can get that all together right now. All right, that's all hooked up. It went pretty well. Now we're gonna hook up the, we're gonna first do that coolant drain with the banjo bolt. And then we're gonna do this oil drain. Use these new ceiling washers if you have them. And then for this, you're just gonna have to kind of gently stick it on top and try to get it all in place without it falling off. It might be a little tricky, but I don't think it'll be too bad. All right, we got them in. It wasn't actually that bad to connect them. 
Uh, now I'm gonna put the speed sensor back in the top of the turbo and I'm gonna run all my electrical. I'm gonna plug in this turbo actuator and uh, I'm just kind of zip tied all nice and how it was before. And once the electrical is done, I'm gonna put this boot on the front of the turbo. If you have one of these kits, you can usually get them at your local hardware store. They're really cheap. Then you could put a new uh, little retainer in there because we broke that other one off the old turbo. Okay, the electrical is all nice and buttoned up and I got this boot back on. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put the oil and coolant feed lines back on. Okay, I got the coolant and the oil line back on the turbo and then I also put this stuff on. I put this hose that goes from the turbo to the CCV filter housing. I put this coolant line back on. I put this uh, sensor back in. Uh, I put this bracket on for the EGR delete. Probably just gonna bring this over now and plug it all back in. And in hindsight, I don't really know if we had to take that stuff off. I mean, we obviously had to take these things off, but this stuff, we might've been able to leave it on. So if you have an EGR in your truck, you could probably just try leaving it on. But now we're on the home stretch. So I'm gonna put in the coolant reservoir and hook that all up. Then I'm gonna put in this battery tray right here and hook that all up. And then I'm gonna put this air intake back on and the cover on top of it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put all that stuff on the truck. You just had it apart, so you should know how it goes back together. All right, all this stuff went in super easy. My positives are all hooked up. Negatives are still disconnected right now. I got to put this air intake pipe in and this cross member bar there. This wheel well still needs to go in. I'm a little bit of an idiot. I just remembered we have to change this oil filter. That would have been super easy to do when we had the turbo. It's still going to be easy right now because we have this air intake pipe out. But uh, change that oil filter because we're doing an oil change, remember. So change that oil filter. And then you can put this air intake piping in and that cross member and uh, the wheel well. Okay, change the filter. I put the air intake piping in. I put that cross brace on. We got the wheel well back in place. I closed the coolant drain and I put the oil drain plug back in on the oil pan there. Because now we're going to add oil and we're going to add coolant. You guys should know how to do that. Once you have that... You're gonna run the truck. You're gonna double check your fluids again. The coolant will most likely need to be topped up after driving the truck on the highway. I would let the truck idle for a few minutes before you drive it just to make sure that turbo is nice and lubricated. But uh, that's pretty much it. All right, moment of truth. We got the coolant topped up. Like I said, it's gonna drop once we drive the truck. Oil is good right now. We're gonna check it again after we run it. Yeah, I think we're ready to give her a start. <laughs> pressure is nice and good and just kind of keep an eye on it you can check underneath for leaks but everything's looking pretty good so far but yeah, I'm gonna clean up my mess I'm gonna go drive this thing come back check the fluids again that's pretty much it for the video though if you found it useful make sure to check out dark iron diesel check out the goodies I got on the site follow me on Instagram at dark iron diesel like and subscribe you know the usual stuff let me know what you thought of the video in the comments but anyways guys thanks for watching the video i hope it helped you and i hope to see you on another video soon i can't take no